If you are a business owner, I already know, you've got a lot of forms in your business. So you've got these forms, someone fills it out, guess what? Airtable can automatically send emails to the person filling out the form and notify your team in Slack. It's a super easy automation. It's gonna make you feel like an automation pro. Let's walk through exactly how to set that up. Hey, I'm Ashley. I'm a system strategist and Airtable expert, and I'm the founder of Systems Over Stress. I really believe that every single stress point in your business, a system can solve, and most of those systems are always built on Airtable. If you're ready to stop manually replying to every form submission, you are gonna love this video. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to build an Airtable automation that kicks off when somebody submits a form. When they submit that form, it's going to send them a confirmation email and it's gonna notify you or your team members in Slack. And what's really cool about this, this is gonna seem intermediate, but it's gonna blow your mind, is we can actually customize the type of messages that your clients get, that your leads get, depending on what they fill out in the form. It's really easy to do in Airtable, but it's gonna be really cool and you can use it in so many different ways. So if you're a coach, agency owner, or service provider, here are some real life use cases. So you can use this automation when somebody fills out your contact form. You probably have a contact form that has probably been gathering dust. And if you use Airtable, you can set up automated emails when they fill out the contact form, depending on what they select that they're interested in. So Airtable can send them a friendly email confirming that you got your message and it can ping you or your virtual assistant. So you can make sure that that uh, contact submission doesn't like fall through the cracks and you can respond to them quickly. Another use case is someone applying to your high ticket mastermind or your group program are wanting to work with you directly. So you may have like a more something more robust and more specific than just a general contact form. You can send them an email confirming their application and next steps. And again, get a Slack message letting you know that there's a new application to review. And in this video, I'm going to show you if you have a mastermind, let's say that they have to have at least made $50,000 in their coaching business to be in the mastermind. If they say that they've made less than 50,000, it can automatically tell them, hey, you're not a good fit right now, but here's like my other offers. So we can really tailor it depending on their form responses. So that's another great way that you can use this. Another way is with client delivery. So if you have Airtable forms, you can have a client submit a form asking for feedback on their marketing or their copy or whatever you help your clients with, or maybe they just have a general question when they're working with you. Airtable can send them a, hey, we got your message. And of course, send your team a message in Slack as well, just so you can prioritize those responses. Another great way is if you have weekly accountability or progress reports that you expect your clients to fill out. So maybe you say every Friday, we want to know what you've been doing so we can better support you in the week ahead. If you have more high touch, you can again automatically send them a super encouraging email, letting them know that you got the message and then you can respond accordingly. So there are so many different ways that you can use this. Once you understand how this works, you can really start to customize it and use it for so many different use cases. So really any time that you have a form and you want to alert a client or a lead or anybody that you have received that form, this is the automation that you'll be able to set up. If you are a coach, agency owner, or service provider, I have a free masterclass all about how I use Airtable to manage and run my entire client delivery. I highly recommend checking that out. It's a demo of all of the different things we use Airtable for. This is just one of the many, many things. So make sure you go check that out in the link in the description below. All right, let's get to building. Okay. So first up, before we can make an automation to automatically send an email, when a form is submitted, we have to build out the form first. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to use an application as an example, but you could really use this, like I said, for any type of form response that you want. So this is the back end of Airtable. This is a client hub that I sell, we really recommend that you have all of the moving pieces of your client management inside of Airtable because then you can build everything in one central spot. It's really nice. But for the purpose of this video, we'll just focus on applications. So this is our applications table. And anytime that someone fills out our application forms, the record is going to get added to this section here. So if I go into forms before we can create the automation, like I said, we need to create the form. So here is our form section and you can see that this is our application form and the data here it's getting linked to our applications table so all of these questions are fields inside of our Airtable table what I really recommend honestly is if you don't already have your forms inside of Airtable pull up your application form and rebuild it over in Airtable um, so you have all the data in one spot so you can see we have first name last name email you can have these different groups so we have about your business how much was your revenue last year we're gonna say that this is a mastermind we can say this is a mastermind that is for clients that have made more than fifty thousand dollars in revenue in a year 
why are you interested in joining? And the mastermind is like $4,000. Are you ready to invest at this level? Something like that. Whatever questions that you wanna ask, you can add as many as you'd like. So if we hit publish here, that's the first step is getting the form created. What I always recommend when you're testing an automation is you want to have data in here that you can test with. So I'm gonna say Ashley Rose. The email is ashley plus test at systemsoverstress.co. And for this form, I'm gonna say my, I have made $43,000. Sometimes, even if you put a little disclaimer, people are gonna fill this out anyways. And if you wanna automatically reject anybody that is filling this form out that doesn't meet the requirements, then we can set up the automation to do that. So why are you interested in doing the mastermind? They can fill that out there. Mastermind's 4,000, yes. So I'm gonna click submit. So that's the first step. We build out the form and then we submit test data to have one piece of data so when we build our automation, we can test it. So go ahead and do that now and we'll move on to the next section. Okay, so now that the form is built, we can set up the automation. At the top, there's gonna be a button called automations. Click that and you'll go to create automation. If you buy any of my templates, a lot of these are already pre-made, but I'm showing you how to build this from scratch. So I always like to name the automation super clearly. So we're gonna say new application submitted send email to lead and alert in Slack. Great, because that's what we're building. So it's just nice to keep all those organized because you're gonna have a big list of automations as you start to master Airtable. Airtable automations work on a trigger and an action. So when this happens, then do this. So because what we're building is when a form is submitted, we're clicking that. So when a form is submitted from our applications table and the form is application, this will kick off the automation. So I'm gonna choose a record. That's why I had you test out the form because you wanna use a test record. So we've got that because this is just like real data that we can use inside of building our automation. So now if you have a form that like no matter what they fill out, it's always gonna be the same email, then you all you have to do is say actions and say Gmail, send email, and you'll build out the automation for sending out the email like I'm about to show you. However, for a lot of different emails, and what I always recommend doing is there's this thing called conditional logic in Airtable. And that's really cool because you can have one automation that is sending different emails depending on what they filled out in their form. So I will click conditional logic, and what we're gonna do is say, Here's when a form is submitted. So we wanna say when their, how much revenue did they make last year is greater than or equal to $50,000, that automatically accepts them into the mastermind. So that's very simple. You could also add as many conditions as you want. You could say if your revenue was over 50,000 and you're ready to invest is yes. So if they fill out both of those things, then it would send this email. But for, we're just gonna keep it simple. We're gonna say, if it's over 50,000, then they're approved to at least get on a phone call with you. That is like the little container for the conditional logic. So what we'll say is we'll go to add action. And you'll see here, there's a button up here called send email. I wouldn't use this one. The reason being is just because on your billing plan with Airtable, it's like Airtable branded. It's not my favorite. It has weird like billing limits. I would always recommend instead to use Gmail if you use Gmail. So we're gonna go to the integration is Gmail, send email, and you are gonna connect your Gmail account. And this is where it gets cool because you can use this, see this to field. The two, we wanna have it send dynamically and customize to who, whatever email they put into the form. So you can bring in, here's all of the different things that they could fill out in the form. So we're bringing in their email. We're gonna say, yay, let's talk next steps. So anything you type in, always that will be what is inside of the email. But let's say you wanna address them by their first name. Of course, that's gonna change every time that they fill out the form. So we can say, hey, first name. So it's always going to say, hey, Ashley, hey, Rachel, hey, Moira, like all of that would just automatically dynamically change each time. So I would recommend using ChatGBT for like the copy you want to put in here. We'll just put some some dummy copy. So thanks for applying. You've um, been approved to move to next steps for the XYZ mastermind. 
So next steps. There's this note that says you can use Markdown or HTML and it kind of gives you some notes of, of what you can do. So you can do bold, italics, headings, bullets, all of that. You can also click this and more button and it's going to show you like all of the different like little codes you can use. I've done this so many times that I know a lot of the codes. So the asterisk is gonna be my bullet. We're gonna say book a call. Um, I'm gonna put some HTML. This is from like my Neopets days. And then we wanna bold this one. Hit reply and tell me what you're excited about. That's a very simple, thanks Ashley. This is not what I would say the email should be, but we're just getting like the mechanics done. So that looks like a little code heavy, but if you click generate a preview, we can now see that there's a URL in here, it's bolded, there's bullets, it says, hey, Ashley. So it looks really good. What's cool about the Gmail integration is that this is coming right from your sent inbox in Gmail. So it looks like it's coming directly from you. So like I said, you can make it feel warm and inviting. It can match your tone. It doesn't have to feel super robotic and it's, it's just coming straight from your general inbox. So that's your Gmail step. And then what I also like to do uh, whenever I have a form filled out, I personally, we use Slack a lot. So there's a Slack integration where we can just send the team a message, just letting them know that there's a new application. So we're gonna say the Slack account is there. You'll connect your Slack account. You get to pick the channel and we'll just say new application. We can bring in just like probably their first name and their last name. And you'll see here that this is like the code for a URL. So you can bring in the, if you go to base record URL, you can click that um, application. So if we do it this way, what's cool about this, if you click generate a preview, here's the new application, it's Ashley Rose, and if you click to application URL, so Slack will take you right to that Airtable application, which is really cool. So you'll be able to see that there. So we've got when a form is submitted, send a Gmail email, send a Slack message, and what I'm also going to do, this is a little bit more advanced, but I'm feeling, I'm feeling confident. If you're feeling good, I'm feeling good. So what we wanna also do is update the record and what we wanna do is update that application to say that the status is that they were automatically accepted into the mastermind. So they were accepted. So right away, the form is submitted. They've over 50,000, that's our only condition. They can set, get an automatic email. They can get You can get an automatic Slack message and we can update the record automatically to say accepted. We say update record in the applications table. How the automation knows which record to update is through a record ID. So every record that gets submitted to Airtable has its own individual ID. And so we wanna say we wanna use the data from the first when a form is submitted, and it's always up here at the top, Airtable record ID. It's gonna look like a bunch of just random letters. Click that, and then the field is status, and the status is accepted. So I'll show you what this looks like in a second. It's super cool. Okay, so before we add more conditions, I wanna test it so you can see. So we're gonna turn the automation on. And I always, always, always recommend doing this when you are creating new automations is I'm gonna go back to my form and I'm gonna click share form, anyone on the web. I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna test it like a client would. So we are gonna say, Ashley test, Ashley plus test at systems. So how much was your revenue last year? When I'm filling out the form, I wanna to go to my automation and I wanna see, okay, I gotta make sure that it's over 50,000 for the automation to work as I want it to. So I'm gonna say um, I made 51,000, do, do, do. Okay, submit. The application was submitted. This is what it looks like on the client's end. Now, if I go into the automation and we go to automation history, we can see that it ran successfully. So we're seeing that a Gmail email was sent, a Slack email was sent, and the record is updated to accepted. So I'm gonna go uh, line by line and I'm gonna like make sure that everything looks good on, like I always go check. Even though it says success here, I like to go check. So I'm gonna check here. I'm going into my Gmail and I'm going to my sent inbox and I can see, yay, let's talk next steps. This email looks great, it got sent to this person, book a call, all that, so that looks good. So now we're gonna go to Slack, I see that the admin channel, um, here it is, Airtable new application, application test, application URL. If I open that up, that goes right into the uh, record, and you'll see that the status is accepted. 
So you can see that this shows that the automation updated the status to accepted. How cool is that? That all happened within seconds. <laughs> so that's the type of really fast paced automations and customizations that you can do when all of your forms are inside of Airtable. There's all of this different stuff. So now that we've done that, let's make the other sides of the uh, automation. So if they make less than 50,000, we'll send them a different type of email. If you go back into your automation, you'll notice that I built the whole group of those actions before I built out like the other container. I did that very specifically because it's so easy to duplicate all of this little group and change your conditions. So what I'm going to do is hover over this and do these three dots and click duplicate group. Now there's so many ways you can really add, you can add a bunch of different condition groups, but this is very simple for the case of this automation. I wouldn't always recommend just like having a hard, like if they make over this amount of money or under this amount of money, auto accept or reject them, but that's just for the purpose and simplicity of this video. Click this and you edit the conditions and you say how much was your revenue is less than 50,000, then we get to just tweak the email. So all of the automations are the exact same, but we just get to tweak them. So we'll say maybe something like, thanks for applying. You'll see that the first name thing still comes through correctly. We don't wanna say you've been approved. So based on your application, now isn't the time for you to join the mastermind. And then maybe we have free steps and next steps instead of like watch our YouTube channel. So really easy to just edit the um, email depending on what you wanna say in that condition. So we've got that and we would do the next Slack message. We'd still wanna have a new application comes through but maybe we wanna say something like note this was auto rejected because of response, something like that. So that way just the team knows what's going on. And then of course in the update record, we want to auto update that not to accepted, but to rejected. So right away when a form is submitted, depending on the conditions you have set up, it will automatically send an email to the client or the potential lead, message your team and update the record. All of that happens right away. What's really nice about doing these conditional groups is that there is a limit on your automations. So you can have at the time of this recording up to 50 automations inside of one Airtable base. In the past, before we had conditional groups, like when a form is submitted and their auto accepted would be its own automation. And then we'd have if they're rejected would be its own automation. So that's already two automations out of the 50 you get. Now we can have a bunch of different conditional groups here and that's all under one automation. So that's a really nice workaround to stay within your automation limits is by doing that. So then when somebody completes the form, then depending on your conditions, it will filter accordingly. I always, always recommend you wanna make sure that you click update and make sure it's turned on and fill out the form for all the conditions you have. So fill out a test one if it's over 50,000, fill out a test one if it's under 50,000, fill out one that is 50,000, like really play around and just make sure that they're all tested and good to go and you'll be all set. I hope that was helpful and you can see how powerful this simple but incredibly robust, super customizable Airtable automation can be. So you can use this setup for any time you have any kind of form in your business. So we just did it for applications, but like I said, you can do it for your general contact form, you can do it for client submissions, you can do it for so many things. You could do it for podcast outreach, like anything that you want. It can be done in Airtable. If this sparks some ideas for you and you wanna see what else is possible inside of Airtable, I would love for you to check out my free masterclass where I show you all of the different things that Airtable can do to manage your client delivery and really just streamline and automate your entire business and operations. And also if you're like, Ashley, I'm sold, just give me this system. I have a client hub template that you can buy and literally just get this stuff up and running. It's a plug and play Airtable template. We have all of the pre-built automations and you just have to flip them on and customize them for yourself. Both of those links are below. Pick whatever fits best for you at this moment. And let me know in the comments how you're planning on using this automation. What forms are you gonna bring over to Airtable? What are you gonna automate? How are you gonna use this? I would love to know. Let me know in the comments below. And also let me know if you have any questions about Airtable and automations in general, because we might just cover it in our next video. Thanks so much and we'll see you in the next one.